Hello class, it's me, Miss Diaz. I'm here to do a recap on the heat exchange experiment that we did today in class. So first of all, I have our materials. We have our cup, we have our canister, our two identical thermometers, our graph paper, and our timer. Now, if you read the procedure, the very first thing that we need to do is fill our cup with 85 milliliters of cold water. It's been marked here on the cup with a line. So I'm gonna fill it here with cold water. I'm gonna take the temperature of our cup with our cold water. We're gonna leave it there so that it can acclimate just for a second. Then I have my hot water here and I'm gonna put it into my canister. So I filled my canister with hot water and I'm gonna take the temperature of that as well. Then I'm gonna be recording it on our chart. On this chart, we've got two axes. Now, do you remember what we did? In class, we went over which is which. So here is the axis for time. Now, which axis is that? Correct, it is the X axis. And as such, what is the axis that we're doing our temperature on? Yes, it is our Y axis. So here we have two T charts that we're doing, and this is to keep track of all of the temperature. One is gonna be for hot and one is gonna be for cold. So now I've taken the temperature of both of our waters. Here, the cold water, the temperature is at about 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Our hot water, we are at approximately 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So before we start the experiment, that's at zero time. For our cold, I said it was about 35 and our hot is at about 145 as well. 145. Now, to begin the experiment, we're gonna take our hot canister and put it inside our cold cup and then start the timer and every 30 seconds, we're gonna take down the temperature. So, timer has begun. This experiment involves some waiting because you wanna make sure that you're getting accurate temperatures for both. We wait every 30 seconds because that gives us enough chance to do the countdown. It's been 30 seconds. My hot water has now gone down to 130. It's a big decrease. My cold water is now at 40 degrees. So we've gone up with our cold and down with our hot. Let's keep going. So now we're at about 50 seconds here. And every time we check, it should be going, the hot water should be going down in temperature and the cold water should be going up. So we have just hit 60 seconds. Now we're at about 42 for that and 120 for our hot. We continue to take down all of the information. It's very important that you stay and you do every 30 seconds because science is about being specific. It is about being on time. At a minute and 30, our water temperature has now risen to 45 for the cold and it has dropped to approximately 112 for the hot. Keeping on track is important. You can only change one variable in science and the variable we are changing for this experiment is water temperature. Exactly. Now at our two minute mark we are now at about 50 degrees for our cold and we are at 108 for our hot. We let the experiment keep going. So 
What we want to do is we want to wait until both of the thermometers reach approximately the same temperature. And the reason that we're doing this is that way we can see the heat exchange between the hot and the cold water. We're now at still 50 degrees for the cool, but we've dropped down to 100 degrees for the hot. So the hot water has gone down 45 degrees and our cold water has gone up 15 degrees. So it's already been a big change in just about three minutes. Our next time to mark it down, we are now at 52 degrees for our hot or for our cold and we are at 95 for our hot. We're going to keep taking down our information as it keeps going. We're now at three and a half minutes. Our water has officially gone up to about 55 for the cold and down to 90 degrees for our hot. As we can see, the temperatures keep getting closer and closer together. Especially with us starting so high in our hot temperature, it's no surprise that it takes a while to get down to them having matching temperatures. At our four minute mark, we have now reached about 60 degrees for our cool water and we are at 85 for our hot water. It's about being meticulous. Four and a half minutes. We remain at our 60 degrees for our cold, but we are now down to 80 for our hot. We started off with really hot water in this experiment with me. In class, our water only got up to about 120, so it did drop a lot faster. At the five minute mark, we've gone down even further and it keeps dropping. So I'm gonna start graphing this and I'm gonna keep an eye on how long it's gonna take for us to get down to matching temperatures for both the hot and the cold with this high of water in this experiment. So we take our information that we have here and we're gonna plot the points. If we remember before, it's very important that we pay attention to our points. So we have to mark down which is our X axis and which is our Y axis. I like to use colors to help keep us in mind. Our X axis was time and our y-axis is temperature. So when we're doing graphing, do you remember which side the x is on? That's right, it's on this side right here. That's our independent variable. Our y is our dependent variable. So I'm going to mark down our cold x and y and I'm going to mark down our hot x and y. Then we're going to take to graphing it. So here at about zero seconds, we were at 145 for the hot. We went down to 130 by 30 seconds, 120 by 60, 112 by 90, 108 by, a hun by 120, we were down all the way to 100 by 150 seconds. At 180 seconds, we were at 95. At 210, we were at 90. 240 put us at 85. And 270 had us at 80. As for our cold temperatures, 
we started at 35, which is actually below where this graph started. So I'm gonna put us down right about here. Then we went up to 40. We went up to 42. 45. We went to 50. Stayed at 50. Went to 52. 55. 60 and 60. I'm keeping an eye on my temperatures right now. Our hot temperature has dropped all the way down to below 80 degrees. We're about 72 and our cold or hot temperature is below 72 and our cold temperature has risen to above 70. We're now past our eight minute mark. Had we started with colder water for the hot or hotter water for the cold, it would have been a little bit different. Now, that's why each experiment is gonna be a tad different. And we had that variations in class. Some of us, we finished under three and a half minutes. Other of us, it took about eight minutes. So that's why we have this difference in variation. As for my graph, here's what it looks like so far. So when we're doing this, what we realize is that our temperatures keep getting closer and closer and closer together. Now, why is that? That's the big question. We've talked about heat. Who remembers what heat means? Yes, you. Now remember, heat is the transfer of energy. It doesn't just apply to hot and cold, but when we're transferring energy, what are we transferring energy from? Are we transferring energy from the hotter object to the colder object or the colder object to the hotter object? Let's say it together as a class. Perfect, it's from the hotter to the colder. So in this experiment, we were actually transferring the heat from that tiny little canister to fill up all of this big cup of water. At this point, our two temperatures are about the same. We're still above 70 and below 70, but we're getting closer. So what we've discovered is that it does take time to transfer from hot to cold. We wanna think about this. What kind of transfer took place here? Was it convection, conduction, or radiation? So I want you guys to think about that and then take an informed decision. Think about your hypothesis that we had written down. What do we know about radiation? Yes, you. Correct. Radiation is when it can be through open space. It doesn't have to be touching anything. A good example is a fireplace or a microwave. What about convection? Yeah, exactly. Convection is like a convection oven. It's moving through heat in air or in water. So when we're boiling pasta, the water's heating up inside due to convection or a convection oven's cooking food by the air cycling. It cycles bringing the hot up the cold down. Why is that? Do you remember? It has something to do with density. What do we know? Yeah? Correct. The cold is more dense, so it sinks to the bottom, and the hot is less dense, so it rises to the top. However, when it's doing that, it keeps cycling, pushing each other around until it causes a room temperature or whatever temperature you're aiming for, heat. So, what about conduction? Yeah, conduction is when two things are actually touching. So when we're talking about pasta, boiling our pasta, the pot itself is getting hot because it's directly touching the flame. It's making sure that the pot is boiling and getting hot, but the water itself is getting hot with convection. So what do you think was happening here? Do you think it was conduction, convection, or radiation? Excellent. It was conduction. Even though it has to do with water, it has to do with the canister on the inside touching the water. It has to do a little bit with convection for the sense that it is cycling. The hot water touching the container, 
goes up, causing it to cycle and causes it more. Now, I want you to take a look at the hot question in our notebook and we're gonna address that together. Now that we've gone over this experiment, I want you to write down your conclusion, addressing our hypothesis that we wrote. And additionally, we're gonna take a look at one more question. We're gonna look at our DOK question and analyze how a different source of heat may work. Thank you for joining us. Bye.